I joined a gym, right? It's a brilliant deal. What you do, you pay 35 quid a month, so you can have four showers in a year. Oh, it works out about 140 quid a shower. You can actually buy a shower for that. Actually, I have been on a diet. I've been using the Herbal Life program. You may have heard of it. I use the Jamaican version, of course, which is where you smoke a lot of herb and you just eat out of your life. <laughs> You don't lose any weight. <coughs> <laughs> but you don't give a shit. <laughs> I've been going to the gym, trying to get fit. Various machines down there. I had to go at the treadmill. Didn't want to overdo it, just did widths. And they have a cycling machine, very nice. There's a little screen on the front, takes you through a route. They have trees, mountains, lakes, beautiful. So nice, I stopped and had a picnic, in fact. Rather spoiled the purpose, but it was a lovely day out. And then they have this stair walker, uh, which simulates the action of walking upstairs. Very good exercise, apparently. Unfortunately, it was rather too realistic. Got halfway up and forgot what I was going up for. So my body is actually getting so rubbish that, that I'm looking forward to getting really old. You know, I want to see all my macho, worked-out mates disintegrating. You know, they'll all be going, oh, my muscle, my definition, it's all gone. I can't run. I used to run like the wind. You know, I'll be going, Oh, fantastic. <laughs> exactly the same flab and lack of muscle I had at 30. I'm pleased I can't run. I used to run like a girl. I asked a friend of mine, Karen, why some women wear makeup to go jogging. She says, no one wants to die alone. I went to the gym for the first time, and you know when you ain't been before, you kind of choose the easiest machine. So I went on that running, walking, can't be asked machine, right? And like after about two minutes, I was mashed. And has this ever happened to you, right? You get off, and your leg goes. Oh, so embarrassing, you know. And I had to get this butch man to carry me out, and he was all sweaty. So I always pick that machine now. You British are tough. You play rugby. Americans don't play rugby. You know why? Because you can damage the way you look. The only people who play rugby in this world are people who don't care. People who are not afraid to lose an ear or break a nose. In the States, those people are lesbians. I am a massive fan of tennis. The only thing I don't like about the game is all the arguing you get. Is the ball in? Is it out? Is it in? Is it out? Simple solution. All they've got to do, take up the grass around the edge of the court and lay down Velcro, yeah? If it's out, it's just going to... Stick there, isn't it? No problem. OK, there could be difficulties with uh, Sampras, your hairier players, falling on it, making a bond. Possibly Steffi Graf down there, tussling away, trapped. Summertime's a time when I regret all the food that I've eaten over the winter, because that's when the skinny women come out in their little crop tops, don't they? <laughs> oh, look at me, I'm so fat. <laughs> and it's fashionable, isn't it, to get little tattoos, and little piercings and all that little ring. See, my stomach's so big, I need a curtain ring. I'm so unfit. I I'd have never have lasted at all in prehistoric times, because then it was survival of the fittest, wasn't it? Only the fittest survived. I always think, well, the fact that it was just fitness fanatics around, it must have been a very boring society, mustn't it? You know, people were probably walking round saying stuff like, uh, got chased by a saber-toothed tiger this morning. Fantastic cardiovascular workout. You know, doing, doing pull-ups on the tusks of woolly mammoths, going, oh, the burn. I mean, this is why cave paintings are so rubbish. Because they were all done by sort of sports mad cavemen at the back of the cave going, I hate art. I want to go hunting again. The reason I want to be good at tennis, I've got an ambition in two years' time to win the ladies' Wimbledon singles finals. Now, the blokes always get a big shiny cup. The ladies get a massive reflective tray, always presented by Princess Michael of Kent. So she'd come over, it'd be a bright July day, I'd snatch the tray off her, catch the fierce rays of the July sun, fire them back in her eyes and just scream, that is for your father's Nazi past. Here's a terrible thought. When a man drowns, he sees his whole life flash before him, which is awful to me. I think drowning is probably bad enough as it is, without suffering the humiliation of seeing yourself decide to go swimming. 
This was England, Germany in a World Cup qualifier. And there is no hatred like international hatred, everybody. And trying to prove my American intelligence, as I always do, as I'm going in the stadium wanting to show to everybody I'm really only about three steps away from, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. I turn to the two English guys with me, and I'm like, man, you guys really hate the Germans, don't you? And with no sense of idiocy at all. And if that wasn't bad enough, then backed it up with, how come? And so one of the English guys turns around and goes, they bombed us, dumbass. And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I get inside, I sit quietly, midway through the first half, the German team gets ahead 1-0, and they just look better this particular day. The German team are all bigger, stronger, they're all like six foot two, 235 pound, blonde haired, blue eyed guys, looking like the plan almost worked. And the English looked like the Oompa Loompas from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So falling behind 1-0 just angers the English fans even more, so they decide they're gonna do what they do best, which is heckle. And they sing songs when they heckle, and it's fabulous because midway through the first half, down one nil, they start singing to the German fans, if you won the war, stand up. And I thought this was the funniest damn thing I'd ever heard in my life. And I actually got so caught up in it that midway through the second half, I stood and tried to sing, uh, if you skipped the first couple of years of the war, but still came in late at the end and contributed significantly, stand up. I don't know why, but only fat people and perverts wear tracksuits. I didn't change myself when I moved from Canada. I maintained the things I like. I like baseball. I don't care who knows it. I know every once in a while I can run into aggravation. Every once in a while I'll get somebody to go, oh, baseball. Yeah, but we call that rounders and it's a girl's game. It's a girl's game. Is that your criteria for what a sport is? It's a girl's game. Well, then tell me this. What sport don't girls play? Yeah, surely if that's your criteria, the only thing you really think is a sport is gay male sex. There's so many drug scandals now, you know, you know all the Olympic games, you know, in the Summer Olympics, obviously, there's the Winter Olympics, uh, Autumn Olympics, never really took off. Just one event conquers, rubbish, you know. Although I didn't stop Manchester bidding for it, obviously. Because Manchester will bid for anything, anything to do with sport. You could put anything to Manchester City Council. You could walk in and go, right, do you want to bid for the Winter Olympics? You're up against Switzerland, Austria, and fucking Narnia. And they'd be like, oh yeah, of course. We had sleep last year, we'll do it. I hate exercising. In fact, I fear it, I can't exercise. It makes my heart pound and it brings me out in a sweat. The one thing I don't get about Olympias, though, is that they pour so much into what, in a sense, can be their dreams getting dashed like that, you know? Like, oh, I've been working my ass off for the last four years, and if I get down there in under 30 seconds tomorrow, they're gonna give me a nice, shiny medal and remember me for the week. Yay! It reminds me what it used to be like when you were a kid. You had all that energy in the world, you're bouncing off the walls, and your father, lazy as anything, sitting on the couch, and he wants a beer. But he knows that he's not gonna go get it. So what does he do? Son? Fancy getting your father a beer? Do you think you can do it in under 30 seconds? I'll time ya. And you're over here going, oh yeah, all right. You take off, you grab your dad a beer, you run it down to him, you hand him the beer, you're like, did I do it, dad? Did I break the record? And your father just sits there and goes, we'll try again in 15 minutes, kid. Of course, out of all the sports, I think probably weightlifting is the most practical, isn't it? Because it is essentially just lifting things with weight. So, you know, around the kitchen, if you've got to move the bread bin, get a weightlifter to do it. You know, they've done it before, they're experts. It's much more useful than something like golf, which is very rarely handy in a domestic situation, isn't it? Unless maybe you've got 18 small baby children, right? It could happen, multiple births, or more than one wife. I've thought it through. Maybe you could, you know, line up your small... Maybe it's lunchtime. Maybe you're feeding them tomatoes. They're rich in vitamin C. Maybe you're in France. Then you could just get your baguette, hit the balls in the holes in as few strokes as possible. Then again, if you're a weightlifter, you could just attach the babies to the baguette and then raise it to the relevant branch, you know. But I don't know if their little baby mouths could actually bite through the tomato branch. I know with spaghetti, you only really know when it's cooked, when it tastes nice. I realized that old habits die hard the other day when I was watching the 400 meters. And I had my super noodles cooking away on the stove. You know what it's like when you start to cook a really complex food, and then you sit down again, you realize, like, I just picked a two-sit minimum dish. I'm gonna have to get up again to finish these friggin' things, you know? I should have grabbed biscuits or something, you know? What was I thinking? So I needed some motivation to leave the couch. And the announcer for the 400 meters comes on and goes, the world record for the 400 meters is 44 seconds. And that kind of got my attention. 
I sat up on the couch, I looked over at my super noodles, looked back at the telly and I thought, 44 seconds, eh? I can take that. Did you ever play Kung Fu when you was a kid? You know that program off the telly what David Carradine was in? You remember it? Yeah, we used to play it all the time. We used to give it all this. Well, you know the one I mean, don't you? The one where the Asians had their heads shaved and they had these white sheets, yeah? Well, we used to play it. And we used to get them, my mates used to say, you sound like Grasshopper, because they were a bit posh. So I used to go, okay, when you catch the fly, you can leave the temple. And when you walk over the rice paper, you can also leave the temple. But it wasn't rice paper, it was like kitchen roll, but it was the same thing. Anyway, so my mate says, my mate says, listen, all you've got to do is pick up a big bowl of coal and get the mark of the dragon, because that's what they did on the TV programme. Lifted up this big, big, big bowl of coal. Then they'd fall in the snow, and they'd have the dragon marks on the wrists. But then we realised we didn't have one, so my mate says, why don't we use an iron? All we've got to do, right, don't put any water in it and leave it switched on for about two hours. So that's what we did. Left it, gets the iron, <laughs> turns each, had these marks. I mean, it wasn't until years later, when I was in a pub, right, it was kicking off big time. It was like a western, it was horrible. And I'm there like that, and I'm going, Wah. okay, everybody settle down, or so I'm gonna use the ninja. I'm there, and then I went, what? Leave it, leave it. And they just pissed themselves laughing. Because all I had on my wrists was Morphe Richards. I was like a superhero. Because with clothes on, I was Robin Ince. But with clothes off, I was bosom boy. Body of a boy, bosoms of a beautiful young maiden. And swimming was a nightmare, right? All the boys would just be there, and I I'd be standing by the pool going, piss off, I've not got breast. Yes, you have. You're the mammary gland man. You're full of bosom milk. Look, lads, he's lactating. Drink him dry. A decent workout. I'll tell you, by the time you get to my age, a decent bloody bowel movement's the highlight of your day. If you're a woman and you go to a public swimming pool and you haven't shaved your pubes, you get arrested for frightening the children. And you know like when you get these women-only swimming sessions, right? That's nothing at all to do with political correctness, right? That's just a pool full of really lazy, hairy women, just very slowly dragging ourselves through the water. It's like a Chewbacca conference, it is. But it's really good, right? Because if you get tired, you can just wait till someone swims past and hang on. The British are always complaining that we lose at sports that we invented. I think this is a flawed argument. The Indians invented chess, and yet it's decades since they had a, a world champion. The Greeks invented democracy, and yet have a fairly shoddy parliament nowadays. The Egyptians invented incestuous royalty, at which we regularly trounce them nowadays. There's so many drug scandals on now, isn't there, in sport? Right? Like Michelle Smith, the other year, you know, the Olympic swimmer, she got banned for drug abuse. She tested positive and got banned from swimming for four years. Well, that's a bit harsh, you know. I mean, what happens she gets pushed in?